the next modulus that we want to define is what is called as the bulk modulus k which is denoted by k which is defined as the hydrostatic pressure divided by volumetric strain. We saw before that hydrostatic pressure is a pressure state wherein there exists no shear stresses in any plane. Okay. It is like immersing a uh, material in water or in a fluid okay, wherein there is only hydrostatic pressure acting on that material. Okay. So, in other words the hydrostatic pressure can be related to trace of sigma by 3. This is nothing but trace of sigma by 3 and we will now see that the volumetric strain is nothing but trace of epsilon. Okay. So, now what we have is some fluid in which a block is immersed, block of the material is immersed, it sees an hydrostatic pressure rho g h, this h, this pressure is rho times g of h, where rho is the density of the fluid. So, the stress state for this state of this experiment is given by rho g h. 0 0 with a negative sign 0 minus rho g h 0 0 0 minus rho g h. Okay. Now, the deformation that it will undergo is a volumetric change basically this cube is going to now shrink isotropically to some cube like this. And the some cube like that isotropically is going to shrink. That is if I choose my coordinate system this to be x, y and z and if the length along x direction were to be L x, L y, L z and L y and if my deformed length were to be, if my deformed length were to be L c x, L c z and L c y, okay. then volumetric strain is defined as strain is defined as 1 minus L c x, L c y, L c z divided by L x, L y, L z. Okay. Now, for the assumed state of stress I will rewrite this as some minus p 0 0, 0 minus p 0, 0 0 minus p. From the strain expression you will get that this stress corresponds to this, this stress gives us a strain which is epsilon x x 0 0 0 epsilon y y 0 0 0, 0 epsilon z z which is 1 by 2 mu minus p into identity minus lambda by 3 lambda plus 2 mu identity into 3. Okay. Because trace of sigma is from here you get that trace of sigma to be minus 3 p. Okay. 
So, I substitute in there I get that now this one will simplify it to minus p by 3 lambda plus 2 mu into identity okay. From here I will get that the relationship between the strain and the applied hydrostatic pressure is given by minus p by 3 lambda plus 2 mu times identity okay. So, what does this mean? This means that Lxc is given by from our definition of the strain it is Lx into 1 plus epsilon xx okay. Similarly, Lyc is given by Ly to 1 plus epsilon yy and Lzc will be Lz into 1 plus epsilon zz okay. So, now Lxc into Lyc to Lgc would be Lx Ly Lz into 1 plus epsilon xx into 1 plus epsilon yy into 1 plus epsilon zz okay. Now expanding this multiplication expanding this multiplication you will find that Lxc Lyc Lzc is nothing but Lx Ly Lz into 1 plus epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz plus terms like epsilon xx epsilon yy plus epsilon xx epsilon zz plus epsilon yy epsilon zz plus epsilon xx epsilon yy epsilon zz okay. Now we ignore the higher order terms before the displacement grading saying that it is small same thing holds now. So, this will be of the order 10 power minus 6 if epsilon is 10 power minus 3 and this will be of the order 10 power minus 9. So, I ignore these terms and then I write it as Lx Ly Lz is 1 plus this is nothing but trace of epsilon 1 plus trace of epsilon okay. So, I get that as 1 plus trace of epsilon. So, now volumetric strain would be volumetric strain is strain is 1 minus 1 plus trace epsilon okay which gives us that this is nothing but trace epsilon. minus trace epsilon okay okay uh, basically you get the negative sign because I am assuming compressive stresses. So, there will be a negative volume uh, otherwise I should have defined this as lambda x minus 1 in which case this will be minus 1 then this will be plus epsilon plus trace epsilon okay. So, the volumetric change will be plus trace epsilon okay going back to the definition of bulk modulus which is trace sigma by 3 by trace epsilon which was the volumetric strain which is what I showed right now okay. So, bulk modulus k now would be trace of sigma by 3 divided by trace of epsilon sigma was trace of sigma was 3 p divided by 3 and trace of sigma trace of epsilon is 3 times p divided by 3 lambda plus 2 mu okay. So, from here you get the bulk modulus as 3 lambda plus 2 mu into 1 by 3 okay. So, this in terms of Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio will boil down to E by 3 to 1 minus 2 mu okay E by 3 into 1 minus 2 mu. Now, to summarize what you have seen today is you have seen that there are 6 different constants that we can define for a material isotropic material one is purely based on mathematical arguments you get lambda constants which is lambda and mu 
it's called as lambda and mu which we denote by lambda and mu and then we got from a uniaxial experiment what is called as the Young's modulus which is denoted by E which is defined as the axial stress divided by the axial strain which is nothing but mu times 3 lambda plus 2 mu by lambda plus mu okay and then we define another parameter called poisson's ratio nu which is nothing but negative of transverse strain to axial strain which in terms of Ramey constants was lambda by 2 times lambda plus mu okay. These two we got it from a uniaxial experiment. Then we defined another modulus called as shear modulus which we denoted by G which was shear stress divided by angle change divided by angle change which we found in terms of Lamy constants to be mu this came from a shear experiment. Okay. Then we defined bulk modulus which we denoted by K which was hydrostatic pressure divided by volumetric strain. this we found was 3 lambda plus 2 mu divided by 3. This came from an hydrostatic pressure experiment. Experiment. Okay. In the next class we will see what are the restrictions on these parameters and we will go on from there. Thank you.